Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike. And in this old video, we're, we're going to a place, right? Where the beer flows like wine, where beautiful women flock like the salmon of Capistrano. I'm talking about a little place called Aspen. Mmm, California. Beautiful. Does all my knowledge of Aspen come from the movie Dumb and Dumber? Um, hard pass. Like Harry and Lloyd, we're traveling to Aspen to investigate the case of a wealthy woman. Though in their case, it was more of a brief kind. In Aspen lived Nancy Pfister. And she rented out her house to to a couple, you know, uh, maybe she eh, shouldn't have. Right? So, uh, we're going to give it a go. Let's do. Aspen is located high in the Rocky Mountains, a skiing town, a long way from its mining roots. Its population, it's quite small, less than 7,000. But those 7,000 are not doing too bad, well make that tree bad, as it's one of the most expensive places to buy, simply for its beauty and outdoor activities. Aspen, you know, famous for, um, those trees, what are they called? And also skiing. And one of those, you know, not doing too bad people was Nancy Pfister. Hey, you know, buy a guy dinner first, am I right? And she was, you know, woman about town. Nancy was born in 1956, and she was like the self-nominated face of Aspen. She was born into a family, um, I believe the term is rich as shit. Her daddy o made his millions by turning their mountainside ranch into a ski resort, and so, well, you're kind of set for life there. Nancy, you know, she grew up in the town of Aspen. She whined and dined with celebs, politicians. She was best friends with Jack Nicholson. She was briefly engaged to Michael Douglas, and her drinking buddy was Hunter S. Thompson. Nancy would never marry, but she would have one daughter and a son 10 years apart. She liked to drink, you know, maybe two, but more than a drink, she loved traveling but also meeting travelers to Aspen and being a face to show them around. Here's her on a French travel show. Oh, 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 access privé, Aspen, la station de ski d'Estan. Je vais vous montrer la maison de Jack Nicholson. Bonjour. Derrière son allure décontractée, Nancy Fister est l'une des plus grandes fortunes d'Aspen. On surnomme Aspen le Disneyland des adultes. Tout est possible ici maintenant, à condition d'avoir beaucoup d'argent. Et du champagne à volonté. Ha, <laughs> wow. What a hoot that show looks like. And Nancy, you know, she was a tour guide to the, you know, upper, your access to the upper slopes of Aspen. Hey, if you have to ask how much, you can't afford it. She was definitely a big personality, not someone you'd forget in a hurry. And also someone who her friends would say, you know, wasn't always the easiest to get along with. Someone who was born into such privilege that it was, you know, it was... It was her way or the highway. She always got what she wanted. No, hey, no one says no to Nancy. It was never an acceptable answer. And she wasn't really someone who respected other people's uh, boundaries. Undiplomatic, but she, you know, shot from the hip, which, you know, hey, made her attractive as well. Now, one of Nancy's, you know, bezzy mates, one of her closest friends, wasn't a celeb you'd gossip about. It was a bank teller named Kathy Carpenter. They randomly became friends after Nancy invited her to lunch one day. And so, it was in the winter of 2013-2014 that Nancy decided she'd winter slash summer in Australia. Interesting, she'd leave Aspen, a town famous for skiing, during what you'd imagine must be its busiest months, but, well, maybe that's exactly why she was leaving. However, she had a big old gaff, and she was like, hey, let's just sit in there for, you know, maybe six months. Hey, why don't I make a few dollar dues, rent it out. And so she did. She was going to rent it out to a pair of strangers from Denver. Retired Dr. Trey Styler and his wife, Nancy. So does two Nancys, I'll try not to make this confusing. However, you know, Nancy Pfister, being Nancy, you know, she got to know them and she actually was, they were having great crack together. She invited them to move in to her place a month early so she could, you know, show them around, make the connections, introduce them to people. She even threw a big old house party in her place for the Stylers. And so, after spending weeks with the Stylers, Nancy left for the land down under. She 
she returned in February 2014. Uh, actually, uh, like months earlier than she was originally supposed to. And it was at the end of that month, February, that Nancy's best friend, Kathy Carpenter, would find Nancy Fister dead. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. 911, what is the address of the emergency? Nancy coming home early was surprising. It seemed like she was having a grand old time in Oz, but on the 22nd of February, Kathy Carpenter picked up Nancy from the airport and took her home. Kathy stayed with her that weekend, but left for work on Monday morning. From there on now, you know, no one heard from Nancy for a couple of days, but they assumed she was just jet lagged. Jet lag is a bitch. She'll be fine. She'll sleep it off. Then the stylers called Kathy, telling her that, you know, although they'd been planning on staying with Nancy for a couple of months longer, Nancy, coming home early, essentially chucked them out. They very quickly needed to get their shit from the house and to a motel. And so, as they were moving their stuff to and from, they were in the house, you know, a couple of times, but they never saw Nancy at all. And they were like, is she okay? What's going on? Her dog's here. Shit like sucks, but... Even after a few days, you think she'd be out and about, and she'd be fine. And she wasn't fine. After hearing that Nancy also hadn't shown up for her tour guides, Kathy decided to drive over on the 26th of February to see what's up. As she walked through the house, she couldn't find Nancy anywhere, even her bedroom. However, the closet in her bedroom was locked, which was weird. She returned with a key to that closet, Nancy trusted her a lot. And yeah, before she saw, she smelled. And what she saw was something hidden and wrapped under quite a few blankets. But she knew what and who it was right away. Kathy got in her car, drove and called 911. Nancy house. My, my friend. I got my friend in the closet. Ma'am, tell me exactly what happened. Eventually having to be hospitalized, she was having such a, a panic attack. This was big news from the get-go, not only because of who the victim was, everybody knew her, but the fact that there was a victim at all. The last murder in Aspen had been 10 years previous. They had to Google what murder meant, and so now they had a who done it and a howdy do that. The howdy do that though didn't take long. There was blood on the headboard of the bed and on the mattress on the underside like whoever wanted to do this had covered up the scene by flipping the mattress. There were a few drops on the carpet but other than that it wasn't it wasn't much of a scene at all. Nancy had been bound head covered with a few plastic bags then her entire body was in a bigger bag then covered with sheets. She'd been murdered by blunt force trauma to the head. No defensive wounds or, or anything, so it seemed like, you know, she'd been attacked while she lay in bed, then dragged to the closet and covered up. She'd been laying there for, it seemed like about two days by this point. So who done did it? Well, it seemed that it was probably likely a two-person dealio. There was no sign of a break-in, so. Who might have a, you know, key? Well, there was the person who found her, Kathy. Her best bud, but also someone she pissed off, treated like a slave, she said at times. Thought was beneath her. Or, what about the new acquaintances, huh? The Stylers, I mean, uh, she looks like a kindly old lady and he looks like he's got one foot in the grave. So, eh. Trey Styler, real name William, was a respected doctor and anesthesiologist that eventually became chief of St. Joseph's Hospital, well, the anesthesiology department in Denver. Nancy worked there too as a nurse and was also big into flowers and stuff, an expert on water lilies. Him and Nancy had a family together. Things were going swell until about the year 2000 came along and Trey developed a, like a chronic, a, he had a chronic illness and he had to stop practicing medicine. And much quicker than they would have liked, their finances started to dwindle, especially when there was a couple of lawsuits that didn't go their way. In 2003, Trey sued his previous company, Colorado Anesthesia Consultants, 
over software he helped create. He lost the case and later accused his lawyer of overcharging him. He had paid him over $600,000. He took the lawyer to court, won, but the lawyer filed for bankruptcy and Trey never saw a penny. And so like their life savings were really going down the tubes, they would sell their house in like a very fancy upmarket suburb of Denver and move into a rental, and in the rental they almost got carbon monoxide poisoning. So yeah, so fantastic. Things were looking you know, pretty grim for the couple when they you know decided to move to Aspen. They were hoping that Nancy Seiler could open a spa business and well they could begin again. That's when they met Nancy Pfister and agreed to rent her house. And you know, like they stayed with Nancy for a couple of weeks and although you know from the from the start it seemed like they were best friends forever, five ever maybe even, things didn't stay that way. After a while Fister done Fistered and kind of treated the Stylers the same way she treated her friends, like Garçon, Garçon. The Stylers didn't appreciate being talked down to, ordered around and hey, generally treated like shit when they're the guests. And then when Nancy Fister you know, left the house to go to Australia to winter down under, well the house kind of fell to shit too. Water problems, appliances didn't work, the house was, the house was just broken, you gave me a broke house. The rent it was four grand a month and they had already given her 12 up front. So they decided to withhold rent until Nancy sent guys to fix stuff. In the meantime Nancy Styler and Kathy, Kathy who would you know, organize fixers, well, they would commiserate over Nancy Pfister being kind of a bitch. Nancy Pfister was not happy hearing about all of this stuff. She thought the Stylers were con artists. And, um, well, maybe she just wasn't used to being, you know, held responsible. But there you have it. So the Stylers said, fuck this shit, we're out. We're leaving your house, Nancy Pfister, on the 22nd of February. Nancy Pfister said, fine, get out by the 22nd of February. I'm coming back from Australia then. If you leave any stuff in my house and it's not gone, I'm gonna fucking burn it. She didn't actually say that, but you know. So Nancy had to come back from her trip early. The Stylers, they had to go to a motel. The relationship was, you know, broken. And the thing was, the Stylers hadn't taken everything out. Well, for a couple of reasons. One being that it was very short notice and they'd been planned on staying there and moving to Aspen and, you know, starting the spa business. They also had a lot of spa equipment needed for that business they wanted to start up that you know they were they were stashing in Nancy Fister's place and Nancy was not going to let them remove it until they submitted to her demands which was almost $14,000 for what she called were utilities and damages to her house so you can see how that wouldn't end well for anybody the stylers were staying at a motel in basalt half an hour down the road and the police wanted to speak with them. They said they had no idea about the death of Nancy, though the police knew all about their situation and how desperate it was. And do you like William was without Trey or frankly I'll answer anything. As you can see, it would be a formidable adversary. Like, my condition is such that I don't think I could be a kid. My wife does everything. I'm disabled. The police did not believe Trey's excuses that he wouldn't be capable and, well, they thought this was a two-person job regardless. Why did you go in there and hurt Nancy? Maybe you don't even know, but I know it's true. I know it's true. You did this, man. You did it. And the quicker you start saying that, the better this is going to be. How can you know it's true when it's not true? It was then that you... <laughs> Lucky for me, unlucky for thee. Edit that out. A bin, a public trash can, in downtown Basalt, well, a city worker was checking it. In that town, like, well, most others, you know, you can't use public trash cans for private shite. Basalt takes it pretty seriously, and this city worker started poking around the bin, making sure there was no you know, home items there. What he did find inside it was a plastic bag. Inside that plastic bag was a prescription pill bottle with Miss Fister's name on it. Now he had heard about Nancy's murder and so he called the police and they found inside a bloody hammer. Also a vehicle registration form for the Stylers car. 
not looking too perhaps even tree good. So all this was sent to the lab, you know, for testing, and in the meantime, the police were watching the Stylers motel room. And one day, what did they see? You know, outside the Stylers motel room even, just on the ground. What did they find, I wonder? Well, just laying there was a key for the closet Nancy was found in, like they had accidentally dropped it. The Stylers were arrested and charged with first degree murder. They both pled their innocence. This morning, investigators in the small resort town of Aspen, Colorado, believe they know who was responsible for the death of Nancy Fister, a 57-year-old philanthropist found dead in her home last Wednesday. Fister returned to her home just days before her body was found, writing on her Facebook wall in January, I'd like to stay in Australia, but the people that were supposedly taking care of my house are not doing what they said they would do, and they're not paying rent, and they haven't paid utilities. I have no idea how someone could do something like that, and especially to her. And I think that, you know, my mom could never hurt anything or hurt anyone, and that is one thing that everyone that knew her knew. Now, everything just fell into place here, right? Uh, kind of weirdly so. I mean, you know, they carelessly left key items to the case around, you, you got your motive, your murder weapon, your suspects. And, you know, like I said, just, hmm, kind of weird. They would just throw things that implicated them just around there where anybody could find them. And so maybe there was something more. Maybe they were being framed or there was a third person involved. That 911 call. Hmm. You know, Kathy, she was very eager to the stylers. <laughs> and the people living there, she really she pissed them off, and um, she made threats to them about owing money, and I don't know. Kathy said she saw blood on the forehead, which she couldn't have seen. There's no way she could even tell that was Nancy, she was so covered. I mean, obviously you could probably guess it was Nancy, it doesn't look a genius, but... And the day after Nancy was murdered, Kathy went to her deposit box. Now, so the Stylers, while they were renting out Nancy Fister's place, they had been paying rent to Kathy, and Kathy was putting it in a deposit box for Nancy for when she returned from Australia. Don't mind if I do. Do not touch eyes. Yeah, I'm so fast. What did you see? I just remember opening the door. Okay. And I saw her. She, I, she wasn't... She was covered. I saw her first the head. I don't remember the position, but I knew her, the blonde hair. It seemed like maybe, maybe, and I just, so, she had highlights. So how many strands would you say that you saw? I didn't remember the for that hair. How much, how much blood did you see? What, how much blood would you say you saw? Because you saw her hair hair on the head. Okay. I just remember on the head. You absolutely bombed the polygraph. Not only that, on the 911, on the 911, right here, here's all this documentation of deceit and guilt. We have you saying, I saw hair. Impossible no, hair. to see the hair. No. Impossible hair. to see the hair. No, look again, there's no. There's no. When spoken to, she knew things she shouldn't have. The body was tightly covered, wrapped up in multiple bags and sheets, yet Kathy said she saw the wound on the head, but also at the same time said she didn't move the body or anything, so how would she know? Kathy was interviewed multiple times. The police started to become sure the three of them were in cahoots together, and that after the murder, Kathy tried to lay the blame at the Styler's feet. Kathy was arrested. On Saturday, officials announced a third arrest. 56-year-old Catherine Carpenter was arrested yesterday. She's being held on charges of first-degree murder. So there was a big whole hubbub about, uh, during that 911 call, Kathy said she saw blood on the forehead when, you know, the forehead wasn't visible. She didn't actually say that. That was a typo in the transcription of that 911 call. She said she saw blood on the headboard, and there was blood on the headboard visible. The stuff she took from Nancy's, you know, safety deposit box at the bank. Kathy said, you know, that was that was for Nancy's children. That, you know, Nancy had said, if anything ever happens to me, make sure they get it. During the interviews, a lot of stuff she said is probably... She dreamt it. 
But still, she was charged with murder and would have gone to trial if something hadn't uh, happened. In June 2014, a few weeks before the preliminary hearing, Trey Styler decided to talk. He confessed. He took them through it step by step, said he snuck out of the motel without his wife knowing, went over and killed Nancy. It all was me. There she was, vulnerable, helpless. I went, got the hammer, came back, uh, and struck her in the head with the hammer. And so you do what? Right. Yeah, with the hammer. Where? In the head. In the Where? In, the, in, in what was, when she was in that position, the top of her head, um, which would have I do want to touch with me, quite frankly. It wasn't as, as strong as I used to be. Uh, nonetheless, I was able to do that. And you tell me you can't stand up. However, Did you that? were giving me an accounting of the story where you were saying you were up and down stairs multiple times. And moving dead weight, funny as you were, Mr. Styler. When I thought about it since then, uh, I'm reminded of those stories. Uh, uh, women lifting cars off of their children. Mr. Steiner, I, I will do a lot of things in the interview room, but I am not going to compare a mother saving a child with you murdering Nancy Pfister, so let's don't go there. The, the essential truths are that Kathy Carpenter really and truly had nothing to do with this. Nancy Steiner really and truly had nothing to do with this. I have done my best to hide it from even myself, much less than and uh, it all, it all was me. He did all this, you know, he says. He snuck into her house covert like Solid Snake himself, wandering in, he grabbed a hammer, whacked her in the head, whacked her again, dragged her into the closet. Dead weight, bundled her up in multiple bags and sheets, then flipped a queen-sized mattress. This was all coming from a guy who could barely walk and looked like a, you know, a strong breeze. So now I'll try and tell the rest of the story with a straight face. New developments in the murder of an Aspen socialite, a former anesthesiologist pleading guilty to second-degree murder. The Aspen Times reporting that 66-year-old William Styler agreed to a plea deal with prosecu prosecutors. Styler is accused of hitting 57-year-old Nancy Pfister with a hammer while she slept. Pfister's daughter wants to know why. Nancy and Kathy were released. Trey pled guilty, and as part of a you know the plea deal, he was sentenced to 20 years in prison, which you know, it was a life sentence for him. His motive, you know, was desperation, anger. He'd reached his, his wit's end and he was mad as hell and just wasn't gonna take it anymore. Nancy later divorced Trey. She retook her maiden name, Nancy Mason. Then in August 2015, Trey Styler killed himself in prison. So, case, case closed, all wrapped up in a Nice little bow, this real frail old guy did it all himself, officially. I think it goes without saying the police have come out multiple times and said, uh, he, did he do it by himself, little diddy do you know, uh, but, you know, I guess he just decided to take all the blame on himself, and you know, I mean, he said, this is how I did it, this is what happened, and, you know, him being the only one there, and there not being a huge amount of evidence as to how exactly it happened, they couldn't, you know, disprove he didn't do it on his Todd. Nancy later wrote a book called Guilt by Matrimony, a memoir of love, madness, and the murder of Nancy Pfister. Uh, people weren't huge fans of it in Aspen, anyway. Also, a few months after her, uh, well, ex-husband's death, Nancy also collected a cool one million dollars. Trey's life insurance policy. Hey, problem solved, right? All those debts and problems, all gone now. And of course, the legal stuff, her husband did it. So that's that blame. And she gets a lot of money. Maybe she could start her spa business. Finally, everything's coming up, Nancy. Not that Nancy. And not this Nancy either, because Juliana Fister. Nancy Pfister's daughter 
filed a wrongful death suit against her. This, uh, kinda negated the life insurance payout on Nancy Styler is once again, uh, well, as much as I could find, currently bankrupt. So, who killed Nancy Fister? Well, glad he asked. Trey Styler, of course. Look at him. Strong, virile, a champion. So yeah, just, you know, keeping a straight face on how that one played out. You know, Trey did it all himself. Apparently, um... And it's kind of funny how it's like, uh, goes around and around that Nancy Stoller is currently once again bankrupt, so she's in a position she was at the start. It's like, um, one of those circular, what are those round things called? Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you here. Go on, look after yourselves, won't you? And I will see you as always real soon in the next one. I love you. Mike out.